hello guys welcome back to my channel so this is the part two of my two-part series of how to make a mermaid gown if you haven't already seen part one there's a link in the description box you can go ahead and click it to have a view so without much further ado let's just get straight into today's tutorial so since i have already cut my patterns on my fabric what i'm doing now is to just join all of them together to create my seams with all the sides i have four pieces each excluding the center front this is because the center front is always cut on fold so i have two pieces only for the center front and i have four pieces each for all the other parts of the satin the reason why i have four pieces each is because one is going to serve as the main fabric front for the gown and then the other one is going to serve as the lining for the inner finishing of the gown as we move forward you're going to see what i mean so what i'm doing is just joining all the parts and then we are going to move to the next step After joining all your pieces together, the next thing to do is to iron your seam open. We do this normally to avoid bulk and also to make sure your garment stays flat and it gives it a very good finished look. After pressing down all the seam allowances, the next thing is your bone. In here, I'm using the Ridgeline bone, and as you can see, I am using this masking tape to finish the edges of the bone. If you don't do this, the bone is going to ruin your garment. So, what I'm doing is I'm stitching the bone on all the seams, and I'm going to also stitch extra ones in between the seams. I want the gown to have this firm structured look that's why I'm doing it this way so um, with a boning you can actually use whichever bone that you want you can use your steel bone you can use plastic bone you can use whatever bone that you want to use but depending on the bone that you're going for your it means that you have to create a casing but then with the stitchable bone I'm not creating any casing because I can just go ahead and stitch on it. So as you can see, I have done exactly that. This is what a Ridgeline bone looks like. It has this tiny holes made in it. It looks woven. So with this type of bone, you can stitch on it. There's no need for you to create a casing. But with this one, you have to create a casing because you can't stitch on it and this is the plastic bone what we have here is the lining part of the bodies so with this one what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the seam allowances to create channels for my bone i'll be using the plastic bone for this whereas on the other hand i used the ridgeline bone for the other one I'm using a plastic bone the choice is actually yours you can use whatever technique that you want but I decided to use this so with a plastic bone what you need to know is when you want to finish the edges you can either use a nail file to actually blunt the edges to prevent it from um, poking through your garment or you can also use fire to burn out the edges so when you burn the edges it actually makes it smooth so it doesn't ruin your garment so as you can see that is what I'm doing so you can do the same thing for your bone and it's going to come out perfectly after inserting your bone into all the channels, the next thing to do is to fix your breast cap and I'm doing this onto the lining part of the bodies. And I learned this technique from a colleague fashion designer. So what I'll do is simply stitch around the cap onto the lining using my sewing machine. There are various types of 
stitching breast cap onto your garment you can hand stitch if you don't like this method but i found this method very interesting and i liked how it looked after it was done Now that I'm done with both the lining and then the outer part of the main bodies, I'm going to move on to the skirt part of the gown. But this is what it's going to look like when I'm done stitching and finishing the neckline of the bodies. Moving on to the skirt part of the gown, I'm going to be stitching the sides together using one inch seam allowance. And I also have two pieces each of the skirt so one is going to serve as the lining and then the other one is going to serve as the lining for the lace of the gown so as we move forward you're going to understand what i mean by this after joining the sides of the linings together i'm moving on to the lace and i'm doing this separately because i want to give the gown this illusion look of not having a side seam and also to avoid bulk here what i'm doing is using my plier to break out the stubborn beads that didn't break during the bead breaking process before taking my lace to the machine to stitch you need to ensure that all the beads are off in order not to break your needle during your stitching process so now I'm going to join the waist of the bodies to the waist of the skirt for both the lining and then the main garment. Because I stitched the lining and then the lace separately, I need to bring them back together and treat it as one. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my pins to secure them in place before attaching the waist of the skirt to the waist of the bodies. And then I can go ahead and then stitch on the machine. What I'm doing next is aligning the side seam of the lace with the side seam of the lining and I'm going to hand stitch this down. Next off, I'm stitching the waist of the lining and it's this lining that I'll be using to finish the rough edges of the main gown. So as you can see, I have two different dresses but this is all going to come together as one so i'm aligning all the dots together and making sure that everything is aligned perfectly and i'm going to finish the neckline of the gown so i'll stitch the neckline and then flip it over and you're going to see what it looks like from the inside and what it looks like from outside After stitching, the next thing is to notch what you've stitched and you're going to cut off the excess and then you're going to flip it over and do your under stitch on the lining. So that's what I'm doing now. This is what it should look like after you're done and I really like how the whole thing came up. The only thing I need to do is to give it a good press and everything is going to lay down flat and nice and neat as it's supposed to. So here what you can see is the inner part of the gown and everything is hidden on the inside. 
all your rough work your boning your seam allowances will be on the inside of the gown so nobody is going to see it so it gives the gown a very professional finished factory good looking you know finishing and this is what as a fashion designer you should go for this is what it looks like from the outside after i'm done with the neckline the next thing is to finish the back as well so i just flipped it over and i'm going to stitch down this is where i'm going to have my eyelid so i need to finish the rough edges as well so i'm going to stitch down and stitch the other side as well and i'll flip it over After finishing the rough edges of the bag, the next thing to do is to punch my holes for the eyelids and I'm using a soldering iron for this because it's a bit faster. What I'm doing now is marking my spacing difference. So I used one inch difference for the spacing and that is going to run through both sides. This is where we are so far so good. I loved how the whole gown is coming up. I love everything about this gown. And this is my first display of the gown on the mannequin. And I absolutely loved how it looked like on the mannequin. So as you can see, the upper part is plain because I'm going to um, attach my lace on it. I'm going to hand stitch my lace on it. You're going to see that very soon. Moving forward, I'll be working on the mermaid part of the gown and here I'm going to be using a 360 degree circle skirt and the measurement I used is right on the screen and this is going to be only the first layer for my underskirt. I'm also going to have a second layer which is going to be the layer where I'm going to have my net lying right on top. So with this layer, what I did was because the, the length of my lining couldn't meet my demand of the length of the gown, what I did was to cut two different circle skirts, half circle skirts, sorry. So um, the measurement I used was I think 45 for the front and I think 40 for the front and then 45 for the back since the front is going to be shorter than the back so i cut two half circles and i joined it side by side and i used my pins to secure them together and i trimmed off the excess from the front this was the only way that i could think of because my lining wasn't helping me the lining was not double length so i had to use this method you always have to improvise you always have to um find solutions for your problems because if you don't you're going to get stuck so i used this method and it helped me next what i'm doing is to finish off the hem of the 360 degree circle skirt and I'm doing this by double folding the hem in was to get rid of the rough edges. I was using this method because I didn't have my serger ready at that time. So this was the only method that I could use. And secondly, I'm going to be finishing the hem of the second layer using horse hair. But before that, I had to join the sides and sides together before finishing it with the horse hair so with this layer i'm going to have the lace on top of it i mean this is a layer that is going to have the net on top
next i'll be working on the tool or the net part so i had 30 yards of net and i divided it into two making 15 yards each because the 30 yards was too long for me to work on so with the 15 yards i remember folding it into eight i remember folding it into eight yeah and i'm going to be cutting my circle skirt on this eight so i'm going to cut the eight and when you open the eight you're going to have just four circle skirts so if i do that for both 15 yards i'll be having eight circle skirts so that is what i did for this and then i did the other one off camera and this is what it looks like very beautiful so this is for at the moment yeah after getting all my eight circle skirts what i did was to stack all of them one on top of each other and i'm just going to join the sides together and then i'm going to run a very long stitch like a basting stitch on the um waist part which is going to fall around the knee area of the gown but let's consider that as the waist part so i'm going to run a very long stitch and i'll pull gathers just to give me a little ruffle effect for the tool that is what i'm doing now and after i'm going to be pulling the gathers by hand because my ruffler foot doesn't really give me the gathers like the way i want it so after pulling the gathers i'm going to join all my layers together so i'm going to attach my tool to my circle skirt which i cut on the bridal satin to make everything one so that is what i'm doing now <laughs> I bought an already made petticoat for my bride's gown and this is what it looked like i didn't like the fullness of the petticoat so i had to add an extra hard net around it with um horse hair so as you can see it looks more fuller than the previous um video that i showed so this is the after next thing to do is to join the back of my circle skirt and i'm going to join the lining separately and also join the tool separately obviously this is done in order to avoid bulk because if you join both the lining and the tool together it's going to create this bulky effect at the back which is not cool so you always have to ensure that you stitch the lining separately from the tool and it's going to give you a very nice finished look. After sealing the back of the skirt, now we can go ahead and attach it to our gown. And to do this, I'm pinning it first to ensure that everything meets nicely. And with this part, if you use the correct measurements, it's going to meet perfectly. You're not going to short or you're not going to have any excess.
so you always have to make sure you use the correct measurements This is what it looks like so far so good i love how everything is coming up so with this i have the petticoat underneath so this is what it looks like with the petticoat and i love how full the whole thing came up i wanted to add more to but my bride said she was okay moving forward i'll be working on the upper part of the gown so what i'm doing here is just laying my lace right on top of their bodies and this is going to create a no dart effect and we usually see this on most gowns and it gives it a very nice look where you can't see any dart, you can't see any traces of any dart. So this is the trick, this is how it's done. So you just lay your lace right on top and then you hand stitch it down. So all your darts and everything is right under the lace. So here you just have to ensure that your pattern on the lace is going to match that of your skirt so that everything looks nice and you know like it blends in perfectly. So that is what I'm doing and you also have to make sure that everything lies down flat because you don't want any bulk, you don't want any airspace, you don't want anything, you just want everything to lie down flat. So that is what I'm doing now. I wanted the upper part of the bodies to blend with the skirt so I went ahead and I trimmed off the design that I wanted and here what I'm doing is I'm also blending in the design for the back so that the upper part of the back is going to match the skirt so that is what I'm doing and as you can see the sides of the the top is matching the side of the skirt so this is the look you want to go for you always have to make sure that everything blends in perfectly everything matches up perfectly and everything you do for the side you're going to do i mean everything you do for your left hand side you're going to do the same thing for the right hand as well you want everything to be symmetric as possible as you can next i'm attaching my bust applique to the bodice but i didn't like the spacing that was in it so i'm going to take it off and i'm going to trim off that space that white vein space in there because i i don't know it was giving me this off look so i'll just go ahead and i'm going to trim it off with my 
soldering iron and you're going to see the difference it's going to look much better after i trim it off so that is what i'm doing and i'll go ahead and attach it back and hand stitch it and you're going to see what it looks like To ensure that your bust applique is lying flat, you have to pin down from the under bust area down to the waist. You have to make sure everything is lying flat and you are going to draw up all the excess to your bust points area. So you are going to create something like a dart around your bust. So this dart you just cut through and then you stitch it down one on top of another so you don't have any excess that is what i'm doing now so you can just have a look at it and you're going to understand what i mean This is my bride's first fitting and it looked gorgeous on her as you can see she loved the entire look and i also loved it so i haven't stitched the bust applique yet because i wanted her to fit into the dress and make sure everything was perfect as possible before i go ahead and hand stitch the bust applique onto the gown This is absolutely glamorous and I'm so much in love with this applique because of the way the rhinestones blinked when light reflected on it. I, I really loved it. This is my bride on her big day. This is the final look and I used some of her lace as trimmings on the toe and as you can see, it, it looks very nice. It gave it a finished, defined look. I also customed her veil it was a cathedral veil so if you want to know how i made this you can just let me know and i would create a tutorial on it this brings us to the end of my tutorial i hope this tutorial was helpful i hope you learned something new and i also hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions you have any suggestions kindly leave them in the comment section and i'll get back to you thank you guys for watching kindly subscribe to my channel like and share to friends and family if you already haven't i'll see you in my next video bye